Hi guys, Heather with Feather Bear Designs. I am so excited to show you guys what I've been working on. Um, I've been a busy little bee in here crafting away, coming up with some new designs, some new techniques, um, experimenting with some older products that we're all familiar with, but we haven't really applied all of their, um, what they're capable of doing. Lost my train of thought there. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you guys how to use some new products that we are gonna be offering on our site, as well as some products that most of us have lying around in a drawer somewhere in a new and inventive kind of way. Uh, it's gonna make your tumbler making a little bit um, a little bit more creative like not that it isn't already but it's gonna open new doors for you so that there's different things that you can do to apply and uh, make your tumblers look even more awesome so stay tuned can't wait to show you guys what we're up to so in today's tutorial I'm gonna be showing you guys how to accomplish this rusted look as well as what I used to create these designs on the cup if you guys look closely, you'll see that there is actually texture underneath the epoxy, but it's smooth to the touch. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to accomplish this today, what products I use to get there, and how easy it is to accomplish. We're going to be using a 20 ounce. This is a 30 ounce hog from the Stainless Depot but I'm gonna be using a 20 ounce for the demonstration just so that I have variations of the cup. Now, I think this might be one of the first times you guys have been able to see the finished design in one of my videos. I'm sorry, I'm really terrible about showing you the finished design, but I made a point to finish this one first so that I could show you how it looks completed. So to start off with, I base coated my tumbler and I used one of the new paints that we're gonna have available on our site. One second and I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm just gonna be using a basic squared off synthetic paintbrush. These are the ones that are, they're, the white bristles are kind of shiny. You can see synthetic. And I'm gonna be using Sparks acrylic paint in the color Unicorn's Hair to base coat my tumbler. And this is just an acrylic paint. Let me move you guys just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna start by just coating the stainless steel in this soft champagne gold color and this is going to take two coats so I'm just going to put it on and I'm going to drag it from top to bottom my intention on this is not to completely hide the stainless but just to give it a little bit more of a <clears throat> intentional finish so like on this cup you don't see any stainless underneath You could do this technique over the stainless. There's nothing wrong with that. I just chose to have this color underneath. I like the way it looked. And I'm just taking the paintbrush from top to bottom so I can try to get as even as a coat, even of a coat as I can. Tripping over my words. What I do with this, if I'm indoors, is um, I put it on my turner and I just put a space heater next to it and that encourages it to dry faster. You can use a blow dryer, you can use a heat gun. If you have thin coats like this, just little thin coats of the paint, then you can use a heat gun, no problem. This is a 20 ounce hog, if I didn't mention that. This is from the stainlessdepotcompany.com or the Stainless Depot on Facebook. That paint is so sparkly and pretty, you guys. This is unicorn hair. 
So I'm gonna let that dry and it's okay. I said it there, it's gonna get another coat, but I need both my hands. So I'm gonna put this on my turner and I'm gonna let it turn for about 10 minutes until it's dry and then I'll be back with the next coat. Apologize for the cutoff there. Probably it's gonna be a little awkward on you guys' end, but I had the, the video overlapped and I had a little error there. So this is the first coat of the Sparks paint in the color Unicorn Hair on a blank stainless steel tumbler. I let it dry for about 10 minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and do another thin coat. I dip my paintbrush into the paint and then when I'm putting it on the cup, I pull it from top to bottom. That's gonna give me the best even coverage. Again, this is gonna be underneath layers of other colors, so it does not need to be perfect, you guys. Do not stress on any streaks that you see because this is just meant to be a buffer on the stainless steel. Something to build off of. All right, I'm gonna put this back on my turner, let it dry for another 10 minutes or so, and I'm gonna show you guys this really close so you can see there are streaks, but I'm not worried about it. It was It's just intended to be a buffer for the stainless steel. So I will be back with the next step after this dries. Okay, you guys, my cup is dry. The next step is gonna be applying the actual rust colors. I'm gonna be using an assortment of the rust texture effect paints. Um, I'm gonna be using the Red Rust. I'll be using the Brown Rust. I'll be using the Brass from the Patina Kit. A little bit of the Mint Green from the Patina Kit. And the Cool Gray from the Old Walls kit. And these are all kits that I will be offering on my site. We will post the link below. When I say kit, they look like this. They come in a set. Now I tried this application many different ways when I was making this cup. A uh, paintbrush was not my friend. I didn't like the sponge application. What I found worked best were these, my fingers. So you're gonna wanna have a hand towel handy. Have one close by so that you can grab it quickly and wipe your fingers off if you need to. And I started with the darkest color. So that's gonna be the brown. Now these are a textured paste. So what I did is I literally just get some on my finger and decide where I want it on the cup and just start spreading it on. And because it's textured, when you start fanning it out, it's gonna give you that worn look. And I go upwards towards the top of the cup, removing any excess, and then move it down. And then just repeat this process with the brown. Sometimes I start at the bottom, making sure that I take it all the way across the bottom of my cup.
And I'm just going to alternate this brown all the way around the cup until I have the coverage that I want. Now, do this knowing that you're going to layer. You're going to be putting more colors on this. So don't be afraid of putting too much. Like you can go back in and you can add any of these colors over the top of each other. They layer really nicely. I also tried this with a gloved finger. I prefer the control of an ungloved hand while doing this. But you guys can each figure out what works best for you. Again, when you're going to the bottom, make sure that you're putting some on the bottom of your cup. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Rust has no rules, you guys. That's the best part about this. There are no rules for the rust. Sorry, I know the quiet is a little awkward, but. Just getting our base down, using the darkest color first, because the lighter colors layer on top. If I need to go back in with some of this brown, I can. I'm kind of just rubbing what's on my finger over some of these open spots to dirty it up a little bit. So you guys can see how that's starting here. Looking super dirty. I'm going to get this excess off of my finger. Now I don't have a sink out here, so wiping it on a towel works for me. All of these colors I'm building and blending anyways, so a little bit left on my finger is not a big deal. It comes off pretty easy. I have a garbage can. I just dump the flakes into the garbage can. So I'm going to lid this really quick because I don't want it to dry out while I'm using the other colors. And I'm gonna go in with the next darkest color, which is the red rust. And do the same thing. Just dip my finger into it. And then I'm gonna go in, not as much as I did the brown, but I'm gonna go right along these edges of the brown And blend those together. I'm going to start right in the middle here. I'm going to fan this out on either side. It doesn't look like much when you first get going, you guys. Like you're probably looking at this going, ew. But as you start layering these colors on top of each other and building on top of it, 
the dimension that you get from using these is priceless. It's so beautiful in the end. Unless rust isn't your thing and then you're like, who wants a rusty cup? That's not cute. If you guys are looking here, you can see that when I take this red color, I'm going in on the cup where there's vacant space along the edges of the brown. Okay, that's it for the base on the red. Now I may come back with this and use more in just a moment. For this one, because it's for my mom, um, I'm gonna put a little bit of the gray in there. I did not use the gray on the other cup, but um, I think that she will really like the gray on hers. This one needs to be mixed up a little bit. Okay, I stirred it with a paintbrush, so I'm gonna actually clean the excess off the paintbrush with my finger and apply that to the cup. So I'm gonna take this in and I'm just gonna apply this in a few areas. I don't want that much. So I'm gonna get it on here first and then I'm gonna go back through with a finger that doesn't have any on it, and I'm gonna spread that around. And you guys can hear that it sounds like sandpaper almost. That's because of the texture on this material. You guys can see it's quite textured. I just wanted a little bit of that gray in there just for effect, so I'm gonna put this away. Now, if you're familiar with rust, you know that um, there are different elements to rust, one of which if there's, depending on the minerals that are in the metal or even in the water, it'll tinge it different colors. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the mint for a, a little bit of a patina effect. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in here. And I'm, I'm taking it over the top of the other colors because that's where you get the layers of texture. It's like it, it goes over the top of where it's already kind of chunky and it just stays right on the surface of that. This is what I mean. See that? And I didn't come into this with a plan other than knowing that I'm going to use these colors. So 
So really the creative aspect of this is totally up to you guys. Okay, I am going to go in with the brown again. Now that I have some of the other colors layered on there. So I put it on with my finger and then I'm taking a finger that doesn't have any paint on it and I'm using that finger to move the paint around. Now when these colors all start blending together is when I think it starts looking the best. Instead of being spotty and just seeing all the colors on their own, I prefer when they start mixing and being piled on top of each other. I'm just putting a little bit on my finger at a time. I know it looks like a lot, but you guys can just see just a little bit there so that I can control how much goes down on the cup. comes off of your hands pretty easy. Okay, the last color that was used on this guy is the brass. That's what you're seeing here. And it is metallic. It's a little different than the others. It's got more of a creamy texture, but it's thick, almost, um, it's not thin like a typical acrylic paint. It's thick, almost like a paste. And this is really, really concentrated. So when using this one, just know that you want to start with a little bit at a time. Otherwise it will completely take over. And I'm just taking this in a few little areas on the cup. And you can see how nicely it lays over the texture of the colors underneath. Just a little teeny tiny bit on my finger. I'm 
And I just keep rotating the cup until I see somewhere that I want a little bit of that extra shimmer. It helps if you have a spot on your cup that's looking kind of muddy. All right, so there it is. Now you guys can keep adding, layering these colors together until you get your desired effect. They layer so nicely over each other. Um, if you see a spot that you're not happy with, you want some more dark, you want some more light, you can just keep going with this. And I mean, it's hard to see the overall vision now looking at it like this, but I mean, ultimately this is what you end up with. Now this one does look a little different because of the gray but otherwise that's exactly how this cup looked. You stay tuned for the next section of this tutorial where I'm gonna show you after epoxy, how I apply the designs.